Um, hey, uh, so really appreciate uh, everyone being here today. So I'm Richard Ma, CEO of Quantstamp. And uh, so we do automated uh, blockchain security auditing. And um, I want to talk about a trend that we're still seeing. So currently, um, actually the smart contracts are still growing exponentially. Uh, so when I started the company in June of 2017, there were about 300,000 smart contracts. And um, by the time that uh, you know, uh, the major ICO boom took off, um, there were more than uh, 2 million smart contracts. And today, there's actually more than 12 million smart contracts in the world. So even throughout this time, you can see that it's still uh, going at an exponential rate. And the major problem with smart contracts is that while the blockchain is secure, so for example, um, Hashgraph's consensus algorithm, um, the layer that's built on top of the consensus algorithm, which is providing all this additional functionality, is not necessarily secure. So, um, for example, while transactions on Hashgraph, they're finalized um, within seconds, um, the EVM-based smart contracts still could have lots of bugs. In the last two years alone, um, there's been about $334 million worth of smart contract hacks. Um, so this is one of the reasons I actually started the company. Um, and currently the way that you audit this code is slow and manual. So as you can imagine, there's very few experts in the world who understand how to audit this new type of code. And what Quantstamp is building is a faster, more automated, and scalable solution. And you know what? Customers love us. So since we started the company, um, we've had over 60 B2B customers. Uh, we have another 20 in the backlog, and we've audited over half a billion dollars worth of smart contracts for some of the world's largest projects. So some of our recent projects has been SharesPost, uh, which is a major listing uh, company in the U.S. for secondary equities. Also Gumi, which is a large publicly traded uh, Japanese company. Also eToro, the um, stock brokerage as well as um, crypto-native companies like Chainlink, which does oracles, and also uh, Crypto.com, um, our friends here in Hong Kong who is issuing a crypto credit card that we're you know, really happy to work with. Uh, and we're also backed by um, some of the strongest names uh, from the investment space. So we're actually a Y Combinator company from Silicon Valley, and recently we actually closed a round of funding from Digital Garage and also Nomura Holdings, uh, the largest investment bank in Japan, as well as TransLink and Pioneer Fund. Um, also, we work with universities, so we've given grants to MIT University as well as AUS. And recently, we've been working with the World Economic Forum as well. Um, you know, we love helping awesome businesses that execute. So one of the reasons I'm actually here in Hong Kong is that um, Crypto.com, they're releasing the next version of their wallet. Um, with a credit card, and, you know, we're really happy to do the auditing uh, on that. Um, and in terms of our products, so we do audit certification. So if you go to like www, uh, like certificate.quantstamp.com slash crypto.com, you'll see that we provide hosted certificates for these companies so that any of their customers can verify that the code they're actually using is safe. And this is becoming really important in an age where uh, we don't necessarily want to trust big companies with our data or with our money, right? So recently there's been a lot of issues, for example, with large companies like Facebook and Equifax, either with the way that um, they're treating your data security, for example, getting hacked, or um, with the way that they're managing your data, so selling to third parties. And we're able to verify this because um, logic in smart contracts is programmatic and it doesn't change after it's deployed. So we can say with certainty that yes, um, you're going to be safe. So another product we're offering is the security scan. So this is actually powered by um, QSP and it provides an enterprise grade solution to do multiple type of analysis on your code that's being deployed. Uh, so we've launched a testnet in March of 20. 18, and we launched a mainnet in August of 2018, and we have a new V2 coming out soon. Another product we're offering is enterprise security monitoring. So for a lot of companies that actually deploy mainnet, 
um, finding that security, continuous security is really important because um, as they try to onboard hundreds of thousands and eventually millions of users, um, there's going to be lots of new type of attacks that are possible. And this product um, allows those companies on every single new block to check for these type of attacks. Um, and we've been getting really good feedback from our customers on this. Um, one new thing we're working on is we actually filed a patent for smart contract assurance. So that in addition to monitoring, you can also guarantee the economic value from those new deployed smart contracts. And this is going to be a really big trend as we have more and more consumer apps that are getting deployed this year and next year. Um, and one thing we're also really proud of is that we're auditing layer 2 scaling. So in addition to consensus algorithms that are doing layer 1 like sharding or DAX, um, there's also additional type of algorithms like Plasma and um, the new beacon chain implementation of ETH 2.0. So this is one of the public reports that we've issued for Omise Go uh, for their Plasma MVP. Um, and you know, we've been deli uh, delivering our product roadmap. So recently, uh, we we're actually publishing a new book. It's the first book on fundamentals of smart contract security. Um, and with a foreword written by uh, a Japanese soccer player, uh, Keisuke Honda, who's doing a lot of work um, kind of in that uh, space as well. So, um, you know, you should be able to buy it on Amazon in a month or two. And we can do all this because we have an experienced team. So I'm a former Wall Street bond developer. Uh, our CTO is a formal verification expert. And we have a team of PhDs with over 900 Google Scholar citations. And our senior team is from Visa and Facebook and Amazon. Um, and our head of APAC is actually, um, uh, was a VP at Goldman Sachs. So. Uh, and in terms of traction, you know, we've audited over half a billion dollars worth of projects uh, with 60 B2B customers. We have some of our um, happy customers here in the audience today. And, you know, we're happy to provide this rich product offering so that um, over the long term rise of the smart contract industry, um, we're able to help keep everyone safe. So we feel we're well positioned for that type of future. Um, so, you know, that's, the, that's my presentation, so feel free to stay up to date, um, follow us on Twitter, and also uh, our YouTube at QuantSnapHQ. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard and Edgar, for the presentation. So, I will ask my first question, and it will be regarding mainstream adoption. So you guys have been dealing with some big enterprise. So what is the biggest obstacles for them to start using blockchain? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for some of our enterprise clients, the biggest obstacle that they have is to have a coherent blockchain strategy. So often one of the first questions I get from the senior team of these enterprises is like, um, what should our blockchain strategy be? and what type of products make sense to build on blockchain. And this is actually quite a um, nuanced question because it also involves uh, what type of ledger you should use. So for example, like Hedera is targeting um, larger enterprises that have um, scalability and security concerns. Uh, but some enterprises, they also want to use, build on the public ledger, like Ethereum. So there's lots of trade-offs when they're deciding this. And most of the leadership teams at these companies, they don't have a sophisticated understanding yet of this technology. Um, so that's a really major challenge. And then the other challenge is uh, with products that reach production, we see with a lot of clients um, that they'll reach this kind of proof of concept phase where they actually build something pretty amazing. Um, and getting it from that proof of concept phase where it's only seen inside the company to being used by their customers, that is a major challenge because they need to get stakeholders from different parts of their company, for example, their business department, sales, engineering, and the senior leadership to agree to push that product onto their customers. Um, so, you know, we see a lot of projects that are in that kind of proof of concept. Yeah, for, from our perspective, well, first of all, um, Hedera Hashgraph is a public ledger. Um, it, it's not a permission ledger uh, in, in that anyone uh, at scale, uh, anyone can run a node on the network. Uh, 
as far as the, the enterprise conversations that we've been having, um, we find that it's quite different from uh, the, the startup community that, that we're engaging with as well. So the startup community cares more about the, the technology uh, and, and the features of, of the Hedera Hashgraph platform. Uh, the big enterprises care more about use cases. They say, okay, you're, they'll tell us your technology is great, but what can I use your technology for to solve pain points in, in our businesses, right? Um, so with a lot of our enterprise conversations, uh, we dive a lot into the, the use cases uh, with them. And as far as obstacles, it's, it's the main ones that I mentioned before. Performance, security, stability, and, and governance. Um, and, and that's why we're, we are attracting these enterprises onto the platform, because we're able to solve these obstacles for them. Yeah, that's true. So many companies are looking for some application to use blockchain. Mm -hmm. And I would like to also talk about security, as Richard has experienced the DAO hack. So I will ask, what if the hack is happening again? So how can Hadera or how can Coinstamp help with it? Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess like to follow on from the enterprise discussion, um, that's a major concern for big companies who are entering the space. Um, so there's some companies in the space that have actually done really well. So some of our clients in the automotive industry, they've really um, kind of found the right balance there in terms of how they want to build so it's secure. Um, and also in the gaming industry. So one of our clients, Boomi, um, they're building this kind of new um, game uh, platform called Finanzi. And um, I think that the approach they've been taking is actually starting from a permissioned uh, private ledger first. So often they'll actually build the full product on a permission private ledger um, on a test network. And then rolling that out into like a permission public network so that they still have control over the code. And they can, for example, if an engineer at the company makes a mistake and puts some like sensitive data, they can reverse the data. So um, that's, that's basically a really major blocker when um, like different people, stakeholders are trying to decide. And then the idea, I think, is that over time, as they move from this like private permission setting to a public permission setting, eventually they'll get to like a public permissionless setting. Um, so some of the companies I've seen uh, do this well in this space is actually Line. So as you know, Line they've been building a lot of um, interesting applications, and they're starting from like kind of this, um, permission setting. Um, another company I think that's doing this really well is actually. Um, Cacao. So they've also been um, starting with their Roundex project and kind of trying to get um, actual applications to build. And in terms of security, um, it's just as a security expert, it's a lot harder to secure a permissionless network because you have attacks that can come from layer one, but also from the application layer. And when we help companies, we have to consider both. So for really big companies like Facebook, are now trying to um, roll out their own coin, this is going to be a major issue that they have to tackle. And I think they're, they're going to tackle it the same way, which is to start from a permission setting, try to have like a controlled amount of economic value at the start, um, and then slowly do a phase rollout. Yeah, this makes sense for them to use permission ledger first. So it's similar to what Hashgraph is doing. It was a permission ledger, and now we have Hadera. So, can you talk about a bit about the governance model? So, how can Hadera tackle the hacks or some part on smart contracts? Uh, from a governance standpoint, yeah. or from a technology standpoint? I would say governance. Well, I, I, I think from a you know, if we're talking about uh, hacks, then it, it really should start from the from the technology side of things, uh, and, and obviously the the governing. Uh, body does have a have a role to play in in making sure that uh, that the technology is is built up to the highest security standards uh, as possible. And obviously, we have big multinational corporations with uh, with very high uh, enterprise grade security uh, standards uh, that that they they want to. Uh, influence uh, the Hedera Hashgraph platform with. 
And but you know, perhaps to like like Richard has mentioned, there are the the application layer security, uh, which uh, I think uh, a service like OnSamp makes a, a lot of sense. Uh, our focus is really on on that protocol layer, uh, and from a security standpoint, it starts with our consensus algorithm, um, and uh, we follow a proof of stake model. Um, so in the initial years of the network, we expect that uh, the council members will stake a uh, majority of the tokens on the network to ensure that the network comes to consensus. And, and over time, uh, we will open up the, the distribution of those tokens to the public. Uh, and, um, you know, it, essentially as it becomes more distributed and uh, if it becomes more valuable, it becomes practically impossible for any attacker to be able to acquire enough tokens to be able to disrupt the network. Yeah, I understood. Yeah. So another example for me is the EOS. So how do they tackle those hacks? Maybe they will have some consensus into those 21 VP that they can solve those problems. Do you think it's a good solution or a hard fork will be better? Well, as you know, um, recently EOS had a big problem with uh, one of their uh, block producers not reacting in enough time to reverse a hack. So I think for that one, it was about $2 million that was um, lost because, uh, you know, um, this liveliness issue. So I think that, um, yeah, these models, they require um, all the participants to be really active. And so, for example, on EOS, they actually have a time period to respond. So this, the, the purpose of that time period is to make sure everyone responds in time. But still, you just have these type of um, rare events where, for example, someone is offline. And so I think that whatever um, consensus model that will eventually be used for large commercial applications, they have more uh, formal guarantees instead of these uh, probabilistic guarantees. Um, that every, you know, the important um, decision makers are going to be online, or um, somehow the software enforces this protocol and there doesn't need to be a human in the loop for these important decisions. Um, so I think it's still a work in progress and um, you know, we're kind of in the first inning of this uh, development, this like Cambrian explosion of um, layer one strategies. So um, you know, I think that over time we'll get to that more formal type of uh, proof. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't want to speak too much about the, the EOS situation, but I, I think what's important here is that from both a technology and a, and a governance standpoint, it's important to, to set these in place early on so that uh, a situation like, uh, like what occurred just isn't possible, right? Yeah, so I do agree that it's important to get the start things done in the first place. So that to prevent those problems. So I only have one minute left. So is there anything you would like to add to the security standpoint or adoption? Uh, no, not, nothing in particular. But uh, you know, I, I guess Richard and I will be around uh, after this. So feel free to come reach out to us. Yeah. So thank you, Richard and Dagger, for your sharing. So give a hand to them. Thank you. Thank you.